uh, when we feel that we've contributed a lot to the UK telecommunications infrastructure by providing the Huawei equipment. Uh, we're geared up to support 5G and 5G development in the UK. Um, and we feel, in fact, the minister said today that uh, this is going to delay 5G. And so we're disappointed today. And, um, you know, for, for everyone with a mobile phone and uh, broadband connection, it's, it's bad news because it's going to delay the rollout and cost billions in, um, in cash and GDP uh, loss. So from a UK point of view, um, bad news. And where do you go from here? Realistically, in a few months' time, it will be criminalised to work with Huawei. I don't think it will be criminalised to work with Huawei. That's what Oliver Dowden says, it will be illegal to do so, hence it's criminalised. So where do you go from here? So there is um, scope for us to understand. We need to understand what this ruling is. Um, and you know, we will follow whatever the rules the UK government sets. Uh, we're, we're disappointed that they've set the rules today... Uh, even before the uh, American sanctions have been completely drafted. They're still in draft form, they, so they haven't been announced. Um, and we feel quite confident that we can address those issues in the same way that we were able to address those issues last year when the Americans implemented the entity list uh, principle. It took us a few weeks um, to understand what that meant for our business. We then were able to make a commitment to the UK government that we could manage... Uh, without the American input, and we, that turned out to be the case. A year later, um, it, what we said is, has turned out to be the case. Um, it's unfortunate that we have not been given that time. And you've been lobbying the government recently to try and uh, uh, come down on the side of Huawei. Will that happen, or do you think your options are exhausted now? Uh, well, the government's made a decision. Um, it will have to go through the legislative process through Parliament, which we understand will take place this autumn. Um, we will um, continue to support our customers here in the UK in, in any way that uh, we, we're allowed to do. So, uh, you know, if that means lobbying the government to uh, modify their decision, then so be it. Uh, but, you know, right now, uh, we're, we're just in the process of trying to understand what that means. And you mentioned the American sanctions. They seem to be the nail in the coffin that's done this, really. What do you think it is about working with Asian vendors and not being able to rely on US producers of these semiconductors that's really caused Britain's intelligence agencies to, to deem you to be too risky to work with? I think the first thing to say about those American sanctions is they are motivated not by security but by uh, trade and uh, American protectionism. Um, so... The UK government uh, could have used its relationship with the Americans uh, to highlight the issues that these sanctions would have had or will have um, against the UK infrastructure. Um, they probably did some of that, but they've now made the conclusion, uh, we think prematurely, to, uh, to, to implement this new, this new decision today. We would prefer if they had waited another few more weeks or months and given us the opportunity of assessing what those risks are. And if at that point we all agreed that uh, we couldn't uh, manage without those comp American components, then so be it. But um, we haven't got to that conclusion yet. We're, we're some weeks away from that. And the glimmer of hope perhaps might be the fact that uh, the operators have until 2027 to rip out the existing Huawei infrastructure. The, looking at 2027, it's after the next UK election. Do you see uh, an opportunity there, perhaps, to work with a future government? Is it something that you're considering? We'll, we'll consider all options, but uh, you know, we'll work with our existing government. And, and actually, it's only 5G we're talking about here as well. So it's important to remember that you know, the investment that the operators in the UK have made in their existing infrastructure, um, will, they will see a return on that investment. However, it, does, it will impact the rollout of 5G. As the minister said, it'll delay it two, possibly three years, and looking at independent analysis of a delay just a few weeks ago by the Assembly Group, they estimated that to be ne worth nearly £30 billion pounds worth of GDP growth. That's a huge amount of money. Um, so, you know, for the sake of a few weeks, we would r rather had the opportunity to do that analysis and then, um, you know, accept the outcome of that analysis. But, you know, we are where we are and we will work with the UK government, whichever and government. 
And looking at the options that you have, uh, Liu Xiaoming, the ambassador, Chinese ambassador here, warned of repercussions and consequences if this decision went the way it did today. Are you pushing Beijing for, for any concrete repercussions? What do you make of those potential consequences? So, so Huawei is an independent company, independent of the Chinese state. You know, we said that many, many times. Um, some people believe that and we're, we, you know, we've still got work to do on others. It's entirely up to the Chinese government uh, to decide how they want to react to that. Uh, you know, we see this as a, a, polis, uh, a, 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 a policy decision that's been driven by uh, protectionism in the U.S. Um, you know, this is not a security issue, um, but it's entirely up to the Chinese government what they will do. It's been driven by protectionism from the U.S., but also partly uh, actions by the government in Beijing. As you've mentioned in your statement, it's a politicized issue in the U.K., um, uh, what's your message for the government in Beijing, given what's happened recently with, with other issues that have led the British government to, to get to this decision? Uh, we don't have a message. I don't have a message for, for the Beijing government. You know, they, they can do their own analysis and make their own decisions in the same way the UK government has. You know, we'll abide by the laws here in the UK. We'll abide by the decision here in the UK. I, I don't think um, anybody would expect us to do anything differently. And some of the strongest voices in favour of Huawei continuing its work here have been the operators, uh, the clients, the likes of BT and Vodafone. Uh, what about them? How, how do you continue working with them after this? Well, we've been here for 20 years. We have very close relationships with the carriers and the operators here in the UK. You know, we, we have a, a decent market share because they like our products. Um, and, you know, we really thank them for their, for their support. And we'll work with them to implement the government policies. Um, so that's it's very simple. You know, we, we uh, provide products to them. They provide networks and great products to the UK. Uh, we'll do whatever we're allowed to do here in, in the UK. Unfortunately for us, it's not as much as we had hoped and not as much as the government policy in January allowed us to do. And unfortunately, the, the cost of that will be borne by the uh, UK consumers who, if they follow the trend in the US, will be paying 30% more and having poorer broadband connections. So it's, it's disappointing for, for us, but bad news also for UK consumers. And just in terms of the national security review that took place after these US sanctions, was there any consultation with Huawei or was this a decision taken completely irrespective of the company? There was consultation with Huawei, yes. Enough consultation, you think? Uh, there was consultation. Um, you know, it's ongoing. Because, uh, what do you think this decision will do for UK-China relations moving forward? It's not helping. In, you know, we were moving in a very positive direction, um, both in terms of trade and educational exchanges. Um, this is this decision is not helpful to that. But you know, we'll we'll move forward and we'll find a way to navigate and and uh, continue the building of the relationships between. Um, you know, our business and, and the UK, UK government.